Over the last three years working in software sales, I've known dozens of reps who have woke up and decided, hey, you know what, sales isn't for me. I don't like the pressure of carrying a quota. I don't like the burden of following up with prospects who don't want to hear from me. So they've made lateral transitions in their career so that they can still remain in the technology industry and SaaS related fields. If you don't want to get into sales, if you don't have the technical coding background, but you still want to work in the technology industry, specifically SaaS related companies, I'm going to talk about the three most viable career paths in this video here today that offer the highest pay and the best work life balance. And I've known multiple people who have gone into each of these roles, so I can speak based on my own personal experience about what I've heard from behind the scenes. If you're interested in all things technology, software sales, finding more success in your career sooner rather than later. Make sure to subscribe to the channel now. We're almost at 2,000 subscribers on this channel. This community is growing. You guys are awesome and thank you so much for the support. It really helps when you subscribe and also like these videos. So if you could take one second and do that now, it would be greatly appreciated. The first career path that's non-sales related that you can get into that's still in technology is customer success manager. As a customer success manager, you are essentially the liaison between the customer and the actual sales rep or the business itself. I am selling SaaS, software as a service. So I am selling B2B to other organizations that buy a license to my software. When they buy, at that point, there's a specific spending threshold for our customers to have customer success representatives. But when you're a SaaS company, when you're going to market, you sell annual contracts most likely, or maybe monthly, and a really important metric is renewal rate. You need your customers to use the product, you need them to have a great customer experience, and you want them to renew, and you want them to expand. So land and expand, that, that's where that phrase comes from. And the sales rep is gonna, I'm gonna promise the world, I'm gonna say, look, this will do everything you need and more, it's gonna exceed your expectations. So once I sell it to you and you start using it, at that point you need somebody to perhaps answer your questions, you need someone to perhaps provide strategic guidance, and be much more of a consultant versus being sold to. That's what I'm trying to do as an account executive. The role of a customer success manager is to be a consultant, to be a thought partner to the customer, to ensure renewal rate, and to try and drive expansion. Once we nail what you initially bought, how do we then expand the license based on identifying new needs and talking about new updates in the product? As a customer success manager, you don't have an actual quota, but the customer success managers of my company, they're metrics, so you're incentivized and paid based on performance, and your performance is your ability to get customers to renew. A lot of this may be passive because if a customer's already having a great experience and they by default renew because in the contract it makes it a little tough for you to get out, you already have an advantage, and then the other part of your compensation is the ability to expand and upsell. So identify a potential opportunity and then bring in the account executive to come in and actually do the selling. So it's a lot less pressure, and I'd say it's more of a passive role. It does require you to be more of a strategic thinker, an expert on the product, so that you can then come in and really speak to some of the nuances and be a great listener and be someone that's great at providing a plan and strategic guidance to the customer. So customer success manager, I know so many reps who don't like the pressure of a quota, don't like having to sell and being forced to, to pester people. And a, a, a natural lateral move is going to a customer success manager. You still get paid well, you're still in a sales related function, but you're not actually doing the selling. And every time you're speaking to people who usually want to be speaking with you, unless they're having some sort of problem in which you need to help them solve. And that that is what I'd imagine would be the most stressful part of the job. The second career path that's still in technology that's not sales is a solution strategist or tech sales, tech engineering. There's a lot of different roles for this. And when I say tech sales, I'm not saying someone who is coding or programming. I'm talking about someone who is a technical expert who has a background that you're really smart, you're very technical, and the primary function of your job is to come in and provide that technical expertise during the sales cycle. So when you think about that value chain of a sales cycle, it's generating pipeline, identifying needs, building value. A part of that is being able to demo the product and align the features and functionalities to the customer's problems and needs and show them how exactly it's gonna help them drive the outcome that you're promising so that you can build the value. So the role of tech sales at my company is to come in and give our demos. 
I need to be working a deal that's at least $50,000 in value in order to bring in a tech sales engineer because their time is valuable and we don't have a ton of them. So it's a limited resource, but it's a really very lucrative path that honestly, I, I've seen them. They do great work and I love when they come in to help me, but you're doing sales, but you're not actually selling. You're just prepping with the rep beforehand. You do the demo and you're an absolute expert on the product and you can show all the features and functionalities and you can answer all those technical questions. So you are incentivized based on increasing the win rate of these deals. So if we look at deals that don't have tech sales on them versus deals that do have tech sales on them, you would like to think that the win probability is higher when you bring on a tech sales engineer. So if you decide to become a tech sales engineer, you need to be able to give lights out demos, show the product, be super technical. And there's really not a, there is pressure because you need to come in, but when you're doing demo after demo, you know everything about the product, you know all the questions you would probably get. So it's a great role that honestly, there's not a ton of pressure because you don't actually have to find your source deals and it doesn't actually matter to you if it progresses. Of course, you want to improve the win rate. It depends on how you're paid, but it's a super viable career path. I don't see many sales reps laterally transition into this role. Typically, you come in to that role from the start, that's just what you wanna do and oftentimes you need to come from more of a technical background. The third and final role that's still in the tech industry that some of you may love is marketing. Marketing is essentially that great voice that you love to do A-B tests, you love to send out emails, you love to put on webinars, you love to put on events, you love to do all these things that in theory sound really great in actual execution, that, that, that's to be determined but marketing's great. I love marketing because their efforts lead to inbound in warmer leads that make it easier for me to set up meetings. Marketing is all about brand recognition and just building that brand perception and improving market share. So the function of marketing in organizations is really important. I don't actually know how marketers are incentivized. I know a lot of the time it's how do their efforts then be attributed to generated pipeline. So that that is important a lot of the time you're connecting a lot of dots, but I definitely know many sales reps, SDRs that have gone from SDR to say, you know what, I don't really wanna do sales, and then they've transitioned into marketing. And marketing can be super lucrative. Every organization has marketing. Most public companies have a chief marketing officer, CMO, and when you start marketing, you then have versatility to go into digital experience, um, e-commerce, there's a lot of different stuff you can do from that. So in this video, we've summarized the three most promising roles that have the highest pay and the best work-life balance that are in technology, in SaaS jobs, SaaS companies rather, but aren't actually sales. And those are customer success, those are tech sales, solution engineering, solution strategy, et cetera, et cetera, and then marketing. All three great jobs, functions at my organization that I enjoy working with each of those fields. It br they bring a unique value, add unique perspective, and um, ultimately they're great alternatives if you wanna still work in technology. I get that question all the time. I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like the video below. Make sure to subscribe and drop a comment below if you have any questions, if you want any clarifications, I'm happy to answer them and I will see you in the next video.